Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, as always, for tuning in to The Reckoning. This is episode 8, and we are doing a very special story today. Uh, many of you will probably remember the infamous uh, dubbed, I didn't give her this name, the internet did, Soho Karen. Now, she was recorded in the lobby of a rather nice hotel in the Soho neighborhood of New York City, which is where she got the nickname Soho Karen, obviously. So we find out later that the reason Soho Karen is acting like this, the reason for this whole incident, is that she has lost her phone in New York City. Now she's in the hotel lobby of this hotel, which by the way, she we find this out later, she checked out of this hotel three days prior to this incident taking place. Uh, whereas this young man and his father uh, have been checked into the hotel actively. They are staying there and they're in the lobby to get some food. So they come down to get some food and uh, the young man pulls his iPhone out and this girl sees that iPhone and goes, that's mine. That's my iPhone. I know it. You got to give it to me now. That's mine. Um, and obviously because it's not hers, the kid goes, wait a second. No, this is, this is actually my iPhone. What are you talking about? But Soho Karen is so convinced that it's actually definitely 100% her iPhone that she goes after this uh, young man and his father. So as always, I think it's important that we watch the footage back in its entirety um, before we dissect it. Please. You don't have to no. explain nothing to her. Take the case off. That's mine. Literally get it back. Please. Are you kidding me? You feel like there's only one one iPhone made in the world? No. Okay, then show me the show No, me all my you get, get a life. Over yeah, there. No, What's on your last round? You better go use find, find my iPhone. Go yeah, do that. Find my iPhone is on. Okay, on that right right no, no, yeah. you can't. No. I'm the manager of the hotel. I don't care. He will right now. Hey, didn't you see me? Trying to help, no, but you're not helping. I what am. you've been is disrespectful. No, I'm trying to settle the no. situation. We, I'm, I'm my son to... has nothing to do with her. No, I'm trying to figure yeah, out what's going on. Yeah, we're putting him on my phone. Show me the proof. No, he's not leaving. Show me the proof. He, are you show sitting me the proof. You better get on. I need oh. you Let's go, kid. I'm sorry. Better get on. We have what you you see you see two black people. No, I'm not letting him walk away with my phone. So since this obviously ends on a cliffhanger, when the footage became very popular, it was everybody knew who the person recording the video was. His name is Keon Harold Sr. and he is actually a Grammy award winning musician, a jazz musician, and his son is Keon Harold Jr. So Senior Jr. That's important later because I don't want you to get the two Keon Heralds confused. So more importantly, people wanted to know who the woman who was the aggressor in this situation, uh, who she was. So keep in mind that this happened on December 26th and on January 1st, it was apparently the New York Post that tracked this woman down. So as it turns out, this woman's name is Mia Ponsetto. She was 22 when this happened, which makes her fairly young but old enough to know better. And in order to get a better profile on who this woman was, uh, the New York Post also in interviewed one of her former schoolmates uh, from Simi Valley High, where she was apparently a cheerleader and, quote, popular girl. So she was one of those girls who seemed to have everything handed to her, is how uh, her classmate Vanessa uh, characterized her. She said, Mia wouldn't even look your way if she thought you weren't important or if you didn't have money, but I was really surprised to see this. It's weird to see someone in high school who was a popular girl end up this way. I never thought Mia would end up racially profiling someone like that. But as it turns out, being a little stuck up in the eyes of her classmates was definitely not Mia's biggest problem. As it turns out, Mia had had multiple different run-ins, arrests, charges, DUIs from that exact same year that this incident happened. So this was like a crazy downward spiral that people don't even realize how deep this went. So Mia's legal troubles uh, started on February 2020, 11 months before this incident, uh, at a five-star Beverly Hills hotel called the Peninsula. So obviously she um, appears to come from some money. 
She and her mother were supposed to be checked out of their room that day on February 28th. They were supposed to already be done at the hotel, but they both showed up in the lobby acting belligerent, uh, clearly inebriated, arguing with the staff, causing a scene. So naturally, they called the police on them eventually when they wouldn't leave. The police show up to find them intoxicated, angry, and combative. Now, during the course of this police visit, both women were not only uncooperative and combative, but Mia's mother, Nicole, uh, even actually assaulted one of the police officers by pushing and kicking him. Um, so both women were eventually arrested for public intoxication, while uh, her mom, Mia's mom, Nicole, was additionally charged for battery on a police officer, which is not a minor charge. Three months after that incident, on May 27th, which just happens to be uh, Mia's birthday, uh, both were charged by the LA County District Attorney for public intoxication, while her mom, Nicole, faced the additional charge for her attack on the Beverly Hills cop that fateful day. So they've just been charged on her birthday, May 27th. The very next day, Mia was pulled over by the West Los Angeles California Highway Patrol for her apparent failure to obey a traffic lane and driving with a suspended license. When she's pulled over, the officer says that he found her apparently intoxicated, and when he asked her about this, she said that she had taken, she admitted that she had both taken a Xanax, a full Xanax, and had some wine on top of it. So when he asked her to step out of the car, uh, Mia was asked to perform a field sobriety test, which she obviously refused. She became, quote, belligerent and combative. The arresting officer said that she was violent on the ground and actively resisted arrest as she was thrashing around. Um, so obviously you, you might have missed this too, but she was being pulled over for an already suspended license, which makes you wonder why was her license suspended already? Uh, so she now has two violent encounters with police officers and it's only May. Now you might be thinking like, wow, gosh, that's, that's a lot. Uh, no, there's a third incident that is worse than the previous two. Uh, so on October 3rd of 2020, um, in Ventura County this time, an eyewitness and unrelated bystander took video of a con- Yes, we have the footage, by the way, uh, of the confrontation between Mia and her mom, Nicole, and the police. So an eyewitness reported that Mia and her mother, after pulling over to the side of the road and getting out of their Range Rover, because of course they own a Range Rover, uh, were screaming and cussing at one another. When the eyewitness approached and asked if the pair needed help, Mia got back in her Range Rover and commanded her mom to do the same. When the pair drove off recklessly and dangerously, the eyewitness hopped back on their, in their own car and tailed them, calling the police in the meantime because they feared Mia, who was driving, um, appeared heavily intoxicated. Uh, both the eyewitness and the mother-daughter duo eventually pulled off into a nearby gas station where the dramatic incident and arrest were filmed. She didn't do anything wrong! Yeah, she yeah. Was she was oh, can I see your warrant? Where's your warrant? Yeah, give me a warrant. Give me your warrant. She was she warrant. You're not doing anything wrong. You are just coming here for no reason. Oh my god! You are just no. detaining me for no reason! I'm like yeah, not... Yeah. I'm not even That's touching you. Not. You are asking for literally a lawsuit. I didn't do anything to you. I didn't do anything to you. Do you see that I didn't do anything to him? No, no. Hey, hey, I will not resist that you do not touch me. Hey. Oh, no, I didn't do anything to you, dude. Like I said, it's to, it's to protect her in case anything happens between them. It's to protect her. I just asked that you don't touch me, please and thank you. I didn't do anything ma to you. Ma'am, ma'am. I didn't do anything to you, dude. Ma'am, he's telling you more than five times now. You should li li please listen. I'm just trying to protect everybody here. That's my daughter. She didn't do anything wrong. She's doing something wrong right now. I didn't do anything wrong, dude. Relax. Oh my god. Let me go. Let me go, then. Alright, well, when you got me on, because I need you.
Step back. No, step no, back. no, I did not do anything. No, I didn't do you anything. That's the next step after getting arrested. I didn't do, do anything. We're all past for that. No. Okay, all right. Can you just fit me over with the normal people? Can you slide up and pull right ahead and sit down? You are treating me like I'm literally like a criminal. I didn't do anything. I'm not even laughing. I'm like, I just think you guys are like a joke. You guys are a joke. There are like gang members that are killing people right now, and you're arresting a girl that is literally a joke. Are you going to get in the car? Please! Uh, I would rather stay. Uh, no, I want to talk. I have the right to Stop. talk to my mother. Stop. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Who are you? Who are you? What's your name? Name is Tiffany Manley. Get my hands up. Give me heat up. Give me heat up. No, 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 you're picking at us. Why am I under arrest? So obviously that is completely off the rails bonkers. Um, so, and, and also this is her third uh, violent encounter with police that year before this incident that I'm making this entire video about even took place. Uh, and as an honorable mention, she also got into legal trouble uh, for trespassing in a prior apartment she lived in. Uh, as was reported, sources familiar with the apartment incident tell TMZ Ponsetto entered the building by using a fire extinguisher she found to destroy the doorknob and smash her way into the apartment. We're told a tenant of the building confronted her and Ponsetto allegedly claimed she rented the vacant unit through Airbnb and locked her keys inside. Our sources say Airbnb isn't allowed to even operate in that building and we're told Mia never con contacted management about renting it. Once she got in, uh, Ponsetto allegedly stayed for several hours, did damage to the curtains, left mail scattered on the floor, and dirtied up the bathroom. We're told she also left debris in the hallway outside the apartment, and I've just shown you all the pictures to uh, substantiate that. Uh, so apparently the police were called, and then they arrived. They could not access the vacant apartment because the door was so badly damaged that it wouldn't even open, uh, and Mia was long gone. Uh, court records also show Ponsetto and a man she was living with were sued by a property company in 2019 in Los Angeles Superior Court because they owed $1,250 in rent at their Sun Valley, California apartment. Now, the reason that I tell you about this long, sordid history of police encounters and violent resisting arrest and all this stuff that she did uh, leading up to this event, because it speaks to her character and what kind of a person she is. And that becomes kind of the crux of her argument when she comes out publicly trying to defend herself from all of this. So pretty close to immediately after the aftermath, um, Mia is being solicited by every single major news organization under the sun, trying to get an interview with her, trying to get her side of the story and all this. And finally, on January 8th of 2021, so about two weeks after this incident happened, she decided she was going to sit down with CBS This Morning's Gail King for a now very infamous interview. Mia, help me understand, what made you think that Keon had your phone? That's why I'm confused. Why did you think he had it? I was approaching the, the people that had been exiting the hotel because in my mind, anybody exiting is probably the one that uh, might be the one that is trying to steal my phone. I admit, yes, I could have approached the situation differently or maybe not yelled at him like that and made him feel, you know, maybe some sort of... Uh, inferior way making him feel as if I was like hurting his feelings because that's not my intention I, I consider myself to be super sweet I really never ever meant for it to like hurt him or his father so I don't know if you caught this little subtlety here but Mia is explaining her behavior by saying well I was just afraid that uh, anyone who was leaving the hotel might have my phone on them so I was just stopping anyone who was leaving the hotel the problem is uh, Keon and his dad were getting food from the hotel that day. They had come downstairs to eat uh, breakfast in the lobby of the hotel in the breakfast nook area that hotels have. So <laughs> they weren't even leaving the hotel. They didn't attempt to leave. I know they're near the door, but they weren't headed out of the hotel. So uh, I'm just saying that that reason seems to fall apart under scrutiny. I consider myself to be super sweet. I really never ever meant for it to like hurt him or his father. 
either. Are you saying that you were stopping everybody in the lobby asking them about your phone? Is that what you're saying? Um, not everyone. Just the just the people that in the meantime, while, while the hotel manager was checking the, the footage, I just wanted to do my part as best as I could. You just described yourself as super sweet. I know you've seen the video. When you look at the video, the reaction seems very extreme. It doesn't seem like it's someone who's super sweet. How would you feel if you were alone in New York and you know, you're going to spend time with your family during the holidays and you lose the one thing that gets stolen from you that has all of the access to the only way that you're able to get back home. I just don't think I would randomly attack people, is, is what I'm saying to you. I know you said you could have handled it better, but I just don't think I would randomly attack people in the manner in which you did. What do you think when you look at that video? You're standing there in your leggings and your flip-flops, and it looks like you're just going nuts, for lack of a better word. Um, first of all, Gail, those are Birkenstocks, not flip-flops. So, some reporter you are, right? From here, as Mia starts to feel attacked, or, um, maybe this isn't going as well as she thought that it would go for her in her head, she starts to become more combative and more defensive. And this is when things get really interesting and why this interview uh, became so infamous as all this was going down. You seem to have attacked this teenager about the phone and then it turned out he didn't even have your phone. Okay, so let's That's you, the thing. Do you I mean, you're, get to that you're, part? you're saying, look, because I'm 22 years old. You're 22 phone. years old, but you are old enough to know better. Oh, the hotel did have my phone. So I will say you're my, 22. Right, I get it. Enough. The hotel no, did no, have my stop. phone. Yeah, so this is <laughs> this is the part where her lawyer who quit after this interview because she said I I can't even I don't even know how to help this girl. She's going off the rails. She had to turn to her during the interview because she shushed Gail King and go, "No, stop, stop. Don't." The hotel no, did stop, have my stop. phone. The hotel did end up having my phone. I did get my belongings returned to me. So, maybe it wasn't him, but at the same time, how is it so that uh, as soon as I get asked to leave the premises, uh, after I had accused this person of stealing my phone, how is it that all of a sudden they just miraculously have my phone when I come back? And the two, and uh, the, the, it didn't seem as if uh, my accusations really bothered the, the son and the father because they were just uh, enjoying a nice meal right after this whole uh, encounter. But all I'm saying- I don't know if you, Mia, I, want I don't this know to if you over, could say what, and I'm sorry. whether they were so bothered by your... So I would like to your, make this short and sweet, Gail. Could, Mia, Mia, I want to go back to that day. Take us back to that day. We've all seen the video. Okay, so um, I arrived back to the hotel after grabbing some Starbucks. I had noticed my phone had been missing, so I just approached the hotel manager, asked him if he could kindly just check the footage. In my opinion, I was like, okay, any person walking down could possibly be the person that might have had my phone. So you can see now how the tensions are kind of ratcheting up between Gail and Mia and the lawyer. The lawyer, because she's like, oh my God, you're completely blowing this, uh, going totally off script, which she uh, says in her own words later. She confirms that the look on her face is exactly what she was thinking. Uh, and then Gail obviously is frustrated because she just got shushed by this um, brat. I wasn't racial profiling whatsoever. I'm a woman. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm like a woman of color. I'm, I'm. Italian, Greek, Puerto Rican. You keep saying you're Puerto Rican. Does that mean that you can't be racist because you're saying you're a woman of color? Is that what you mean? Exactly. Does that look to you like the face of a lawyer who thinks things are going well? She almost seems completely resigned to defeat at this point in the interview, and we're only halfway done. Well, I, I would disagree that people of color can be racist too. Do you believe that you should pay a price for this? I don't feel that my accusation is a is a is a crime but it's more than the accusation it's the way that you tackled him it seems on the videotape what would you do differently you said that you look at that tape and that's not who you are i think i could have just asked the hotel manager so yes i could have stepped aside or the father and i we we immediately could have uh started just speaking at a lower tone and probably that would have handled the whole situation a lot better with all due respect when Mr. Harold was talking to you, it seemed to me that he was responding to you because you had accused his son. I'm saying that both of us, I said that both of us. You, you, see, you see two black people? No, I'm not letting him walk away with my phone. Bottom line is this issue is much bigger than um, I think Mia is appreciating. And she, she sees it as a very simple thing. She was a 22-year-old woman alone in New York 
No one is with her. Her entire contacts, flight arrangements, Wi-Fi, emails, Apple Pay, her funds, her money is all on that phone. She agreed that her behavior and her actions were definitely less than elegant, shall we say, and less than graceful yeah, and yeah. less than what anyone else would do. And she agreed and she wouldn't have repeated it. It's been reported that your phone was returned to you by an Uber driver. Is that true? That is not true because I arrived to the hotel with my phone in my hand. Okay. Who returned your phone to you? The uh, hotel uh, receptionist. Mia, where had the phone been? Why don't we ask the hotel receptionist? M Mia, to be honest, I'm telling you, you seem to be not remorseful, to have no contrition, that you're almost a little flippant about that. And I think if you could put a uh, flippant in the dictionary next to a uh, short video of a facial expression, it would look something like this. You have to understand for this teenage boy who says that he was shattered, who said that he was traumatized, this I'm is a traumatized. Deal. You're traumatized too because- Yeah, and I'm sorry. I had, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. He is honestly, he, he's 14. And that's what they're, that's what they're claiming. Um, that's what they're claiming is that he's 14. She seems to think that he's not actually 14. This is all a big lie, as though we can't easily uh, verify the age of one of the kids of a super famous Grammy award-winning jazz musician. Yeah, I'm 22. I've, I've lived probably just the same amount of life as him. Yeah, you know, he's 14, I'm 22. We're basically the same age. I probably have almost as much life experience as he does, plus eight years. Like, honestly, I'm just as a kid at heart as he is. I feel sorry that I made the family go through like all of that stress, but at the same time, it wasn't just them going through that. I just don't think that you helped yourself by your behavior. Of when course When you not. looked at that video, what did you think? What did you think, Mia, you when already you looked asked at me the that. video? You already asked me that in the beginning of the interview. I'm not, I'm okay. not going over it again. I, 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 would like right. to, I would like to have a real interview with real questions and real heart and real sincere apologies. Let 2021 be the moment of healing, seriously. All right, all right. What, what would you, you want an interview with real questions? What would you, well, I'll give you the floor. What would you like us to know, Mia? That I'm sincerely sorry to the family um, and the dad and the son for making them feel as if I was uh, racist towards them when that is not my intention. Only a few days after this incident, police attempted to pull Mia Ponsetto over near her home in Piru, California on January 7th, only a few days after this uh, interview we just watched took place. Uh, but she reportedly drove all the way back to her house before stopping, uh, e even though that the officer was trying to get her to stop and pull her over. So she drives all the way back to her house with the cop tailing her, uh, and then refused to exit the vehicle when she got back. So she was forcibly removed and arrested on a fugitive warrant that had been issued by the New York City Police Department. Um, so the local police had this to say, quote, she tried to slam the door on one of the deputies and that's when they just reached in and forcibly removed her, Department Captain Eric Bushow told the Associated Press, adding that the sheriff's office would request that county prosecutors charge her with resisting arrest. Uh, so four times now, she, well, actually, I guess it was her mom the first time who was violent with the officer, but three of four arrests now, she has been violent with police officers, and yet she is not in jail. So you're probably wondering at this point, okay, well, that's that, that's the scoop on Mia, but what happened to the victims of this whole meltdown of hers? What Like this, uh, this famous jazz musician you mentioned earlier, what's going on with that family? Um, so th they got very active very quickly, and I don't know if it was because um, they're, you know, reasonably well-connected family or what, but they were able to get uh, the famed civil rights and personal injury attorney Ben Crump uh, to be their advocate in this whole situation almost immediately after the incident happened and blew up. So on the very same day that this incident occurred, Keon Harold Sr., the father, took to Instagram to say this, I am furious. We see this crap happening all the time, but it hits different when it hits home. I typically try to keep things positive, but nothing about this video is positive. The lady in this video assaulted my 14-year-old son and me as we came down from our room in the Arlo Hotel's Arlo Soho to get breakfast. This person quote-unquote lost her phone, and apparently my son magically acquired it, which is merely ridiculous. 
The incident went on for five more minutes, me protecting my son from this lunatic. She scratched me. She tackled and grabbed him. He is a child. Now watch it again. This lady is not even a guest at the hotel. She checked out of the hotel on the 23rd, which I did mention earlier that that happened on the 23rd and this was the 26th. So now watch as the manager advocates for the lady who is not even a hotel guest, insisting and attempting to use his managerial authority to force my son to show his phone to this random lady. He actually empowered her. He didn't even consider the fact we were actually the guests. Now think about the trauma that my son now has to carry, only coming downstairs to have box day brunch with his dad. Then her phone was magically returned by an Uber driver a few minutes after this incident. No apology from her after this traumatic situation to my son and not to me. No apologies from the establishment. Now, I'm not sure if it's because this was a relatively well-connected family, being a famous jazz musician on the father's side and on the mother's side. I believe she's also a, a backup musician for Beyonce. Or it might have been because this incident got really famous really quickly and... You know, the conversations about race were going on. This is 2020, so, you know, the the nation is actively having a lot of conversations about race. Uh, two days later, on December 28th, the Herald family had already enlisted the help of the famous civil rights and personal injury attorney Ben Crump, as well as Reverend Al Sharpton and his organizations. They worked together to issue several statements, one of which was on Ben Crump's Twitter two days after this incident happened. He said, The parents of Keon Harold Jr. and I are calling on Manhattan DA to bring charges of assault and battery against the woman who attacked Keon and falsely accused him of stealing her phone at Arlo Hotels. Join us in sending a clear message that hateful, racially motivated behavior is unacceptable. Email Manhattan DA Cy Vance Jr. and urge him to charge the woman who attacked Keon Harold Jr., which, as we now know because I said it earlier, um, and obviously because of all the news reports, I'm not the first person to talk about this, that actually happened. They did charge her, they arrested her, and then she got more charges for fighting with the police. Now, two days after this uh, statement was released on Twitter, along with a slew of other similar statements, um, a press conference was held on December 30th outside of New York City Hall, where both Crump and Sharpton spoke rather extensively, uh, along with the parents. And given that this was before it was discovered that the woman in the video was Mia Ponsetto, uh, they... They chose instead to focus their frustrations on the hotel chain uh, where this all took place. So the team called for accountability for the hotel management as well as the ownership of the entire hotel chain of nine hotels. The mom, uh, whose name is Kat Rodriguez, they have different last names, her and the father, uh, probably because that's what... If you're a musician and your name is your brand, you know, a lot of people keep their own last names when they get married. Artists... Um, Actors do this all the time. So she said, Now Arlo, you've been real quiet, Arlo being the name of the hotel, just as a reminder. Um, you've been real quiet, like they say in my hood in Crown Heights. You don't know who you're messing with, Rodriguez said. We ain't playing around. We're going to boycott Arlo and the other hotels and tell Yelp and other reviewers that this hotel allows racial profiling against African Americans, against people of color. We want accountability for everybody who allowed this injustice to happen against this child, Crump said. So the lawyer's now talking. We want to make sure that the Arlo Hotel and their parent company understands that individual acts of racism are empowered by institutions like police and corporations like the Quantum Hospitality LLC, which is um, the parent company that owns all nine of these hotels. Uh, it was guilty until proven innocent, Crump said. Uh, Sharpton, meanwhile, called the hotel the accomplice of hate and said, show you stand against racism by checking out. Show you stand against racial profiling by checking out. Show you stand against young black boys being criminalized by checking out. It's time for national checking out on racism and on bigotry. We are tired of checking in and paying for people who disrespect us. It's checkout time. We demand full prosecution. We demand if this woman is saying she was assaulted, put her in the grand jury. Now, as you can imagine, the hotel felt a little put on the spot by this message, and they responded almost immediately, uh, issuing the following apology message. 
We are deeply disheartened about the recent incident of baseless accusation, prejudice, and assault against an innocent guest of Arlo Hotel. In investigating the incident further, we've learned that the manager on duty promptly called the police regarding the woman's conduct and that hotel security intervened to prevent further violence. Still, more could have been done to de-escalate the dispute. No Arlo guest or any person should be subject to this kind of behavior. We want to apologize to Mr. Harold and his son for this inexcusable experience and have reached out to them directly to express our sincere regret and to offer help in dealing with this traumatic event. We are committed to making sure that this never happens again at any of our hotels. So despite the apology, however, uh, Sharpton's National Action Network, which is a, a group that arranges protests on behalf of social issues that Sharpton is interested in, um, organized a protest outside that hotel as well as several other hotels owned by their parent company uh, to demand the apology of the employee who had involved himself in the incident. And actually, that employee was the manager of Arlo Hotel, um, and as far as I'm concerned, he still is. Uh, Chad Nathan was the subject of you know, change.org petitions to have him fired for racial profiling. Uh, and then shortly afterward in March, so about two months later, um, the family decided to file a lawsuit for racial profiling against the manager and the hotel. And in the same press conference, they also announced that they were going to be seeking civil charges against uh, Mia Ponsetto herself. So at this point, Mia is facing criminal charges as well as civil charges, and it's only March of 2021. So fast forward to July of 2021, so three months later now, a New York grand jury indicts Mia on four counts, unlawful imprisonment, committing a hate crime, endangering the welfare of a child, and aggravated harassment. Uh, her attorney at the time, who is now the second attorney who has tried to help her, uh, this guy's name is Paul D'Amelia, pled not guilty on Mia's behalf. She was then released under supervision ahead of her next court date, which was set for October of the same year, 2021. Her new lawyer said of the charges, these charges alleged are a brazen and clear overreach of the intent of the statute. In sum, they are absurd and a perversion of our legal system. So strong words there, came out swinging this Paul guy. So you'd be forgiven right about now for wondering, you know, what ended up happening to this woman. Surely after multiple DUIs, multiple violent arrests, multiple assaults on police officers, and this slew of crimes that she's been charged with after the incident that we are covering, you might be assuming that this girl saw some serious jail time. Not so. In February of 2022, it was revealed that Mia had apparently struck a plea deal that would allow her to dodge any jail time. So under the agreement detailed during a virtual hearing in Manhattan Supreme Court, the 23-year-old would cop to the top count against her, unlawful imprisonment as a hate crime. She'd then be required to live a law-abiding life for the next two years. Wow, two whole years of obeying the law is the only thing she has to do? Continue with her therapy and abide by the terms of her probation in California, where she lives, Assistant District Attorney Sarah Marquez said. If Ponsetto can manage that, the Manhattan DA's office will give her the chance to withdraw her guilty plea to the felony and instead cop to aggravated harassment, a misdemeanor, for which she'd be sentenced to time served, meaning she wouldn't do any jail time. Fast forward again, two more months to April of 2022, and we learn two things. One, apparently Mia did accept the uh, terms of the plea deal in uh, New York from the district attorney that were just outlined. So she's taken that deal and she just needs to stay out of trouble for two years with police uh, and she's good to go. We also learn, importantly, um, remember how I said that there was a civil lawsuit pending against Mia from the uh, Harold family over this incident. So she was a no-show. She just decided not to show up for uh, that civil hearing, which the judge obviously did not like. And in fact, actually commented on the matter. So Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Shlomo Hagler said during a virtual hearing on the matter, that's the worst thing you can do. It shows disrespect. The judge, declaring he will wait for no man, said Ponsetto's lack of response wouldn't hold the case up, and he set a schedule for discovery to be filed and for depositions to take place. For the life of me, I have not found a single update on 
what happened to Mia with this civil lawsuit. Apparently she stayed out of criminal trouble because there's no news there. But as you'll recall, the civil lawsuit against Mia was not the only civil lawsuit that the Harold family filed. They also filed a separate civil lawsuit against the hotel, and we got a huge treasure trove of information uh, from the, the court proceedings of that lawsuit in October of last year, very re literally like a couple of months ago. First, we learned that Chad Nathan, who we only knew as a manager of the hotel before, is actually the hotel's director of operations, uh, and he spoke pretty extensively at this hearing. Or maybe I shouldn't say spoke extensively, but his email communications, uh, part of the internal report on this whole incident, just between him and his company, uh, were made public, and they clear up a lot of the fuzzy details. A previous female guest, uh, he said, was sitting in the library and came to the front desk asking me to check the camera because she stepped away from the table for a moment and thinks someone stole her phone. As I started to look into the camera, a different person came down from the elevator and the original person started accusing him of stealing her phone and demanding that he empty his pockets. I tried to stop it and have her wait somewhere else. She was very loud and causing a scene. As I started to de-escalate the situation with the original gentleman, two different people turned the corner and she started accusing them of stealing her phone. Again, I told her to go somewhere else while I investigated, but she continued to cause a huge scene and even started grabbing the guest pockets. The guest backed away and ended up dragging her across the lobby, causing a huge scene. I had security remove the girl from the hotel. About five minutes later, an Uber driver dropped off a cell phone that a previous passenger had left. This could be unrelated. I apologize to the numerous patrons in the lobby. Right now, we still have the phone dropped off by the Uber. His next email read, I attempted to defuse the situation and apologize to this guest who had nothing to do with the incident. While that was happening, a father and son who were African American came around the corner, Mr. Harold and his son, and she immediately started pointing at the son if, as if she was positive that he was the one who took the phone. He was holding a cell phone in his hand and Mia was yelling that that was her phone. At the time, I asked Mia what background what, what her background was on her phone and asked the son if I could see his background. He and the father did not want to show me, and that's when Mia attacked them, trying to grab the phone and reaching for their pockets. Mia grabbed them and at one point was being dragged around as the father and son attempted to escape. This commotion ended up moving from the front desk area all the way to the living room. Around that time, I told Monier to call the police and I had already sent someone to find the security guard. At one point, there were three or four people on the floor in the hallway near the living room. The son was the first one to be freed from the floor and I asked him if he was okay and told him to walk to the restaurant to get away from Mia. Mr. Harold was up next and I asked him if he was okay. He was still very upset so I asked him if he needed water. I told him to take a few minutes and that I would be at the front desk when he was ready to connect. So two things stand out to me the most glaringly about the report that I just read. So first and foremost, we learn that Mia actually accosted two people before Keon Harold Sr. and his son uh, were ever involved. She accused another group of people of stealing her phone uh, and grabbed on their pockets and acted uh, wacky with them. Second, we find out that the hotel actually doesn't know whether the phone that was returned by an Uber driver was hers or not. You might remember how in uh, the interview with Gail King, Mia claimed that the phone that the Uber driver had dropped off wasn't hers and that wasn't where it came from. Uh, however, as we find out in this October report, she claimed that phone. So she did claim that phone, which means it was with almost 100% certainty, her phone that the Uber driver was returning. And if there are any doubts left in your mind about that, we also have this little tidbit from another employee who said, around 3.50 p.m., a woman tried to get back into the hotel, but security was holding her at the door. I go inside and bring her out her wallet. I mention that I may have her phone and ask her for her number so that I could call and confirm that it's hers. The phone rings, so I give it back. He then says, she goes in for a hug, which I recoiled away from her. She left right after that. The same employee also added that Ponsetto had accused three different guests before this incident took place, the first of whom was a white male. Um, and then 
said the front desk manager tried to stop Ponsetto, but that the latter didn't listen and went on to try to accuse, accuse two black guys of taking the same phone uh, about two minutes after she had levied the initial accusations against the first guy. So, I don't know, does the fact that the first person she accused wasn't a black person but a white guy make this less of a race thing? I, I'm not sure. I'm certainly not qualified to, uh, to litigate that, but... I think it's undeniable, and we can all agree, that uh, Mia acted out of pocket. I'm going to go ahead and stamp her out of pocket for this event, and we will tie that up with a nice bow. Uh, that's everything that has happened in this entire incident so far, and all of the conclusions that are available. Um, if anything changes, I'll let you know, though. You never know. She could get arrested again. She has two years of behaving herself to go, so we'll... Keep an eye on Mia. All right. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, see you in a few days. We'll do this again.